The John Murray Show with Miriam on RTE Radio 1 with the new Kia Karens. Seven flexible seats, seven years peace of mind. Kia, home of the seven-year warranty. Hello there and good morning. Well, it's that time of year again. The Board Gosh Energy Irish Book Awards. The John Murray Show with Miriam on RTE Radio 1 with the new Kia Karens. Seven flexible seats, seven years peace of mind. Kia, home of the seven-year warranty. Hello there and good morning. Well, it's that time of year again, the Board Gosh Energy Irish Book Awards. And of course, this show has its own category at the awards. And later on in today's programme, we'll be announcing the six books nominated in the John Murray Show Listener's Choice Award category. We'll also have three owners of independent bookshops here in studio reviewing the shortlist. You can text us as ever to 51551. You can email Miriam at rt.ie. You can tweet us, which is very easy, to either at the John Murray Show or to at Miriam O'Cal. First, though, today, well, this woman has truly had an extraordinary career. Seven Grammys, two Oscar nominations, 10 Country Music Association Awards and sales of more than 100 million records. The list goes on and on and it's hardly over. Dolly Parton, good morning. Well, good morning to you. I'm so excited to be coming back to see all you folks. I just love you and I missed you and... Here I come again. <laughs> <laughs> You're coming to Ireland, of course, in June of this year, and we'll talk about that again. But you have been here before. Do you remember 20 years ago you visited a pub in Kerry owned by Paul D'O'Shea? Yes, I love that. I was visiting there with my friend Walter Hagen, who ran the uh, American Airlines. He was from there, so he brought me over, and we went to Patty's place, and I sang there, got to meet Patty, and... Actually, he gave me a jersey, and I brought it back, and it's hanging on my wall in my music room. So absolutely, I remember all of that. And actually, he was greatly loved here, and sadly, he passed away not that long ago, Dolly. But you Oh, s- I didn't know that. Yeah. I'm sorry to hear that. You sang, of course, in the pub that night, Coat of Many Colours. Do you remember that? I absolutely do. I remember singing Coat of Many Colours. I remember everything about that night. It was a wonderful night. There were so many precious people around. When I was singing that song, I was looking at those sweet Irish faces faces, tears rolling down like they related to that. And I, that really touched me. So that was a special time for me. And I know a lot of people were very moved by the fact that you bothered to sing that night. In fact, we have a clip of you singing that night in Pawdy's Pub, which we're going to listen to now, Dolly. That would be great. I was thinking this evening what would be the best present to give you. And uh, the last big, big night we had here was in 1985 when I captained the Kerry team. And we won the All-Ireland. And this is my jersey. And, and it hasn't been washed since, so... Hello and welcome to Ireland. <laughs> my name is Dolly and I'm here on vacation and I had not planned to sing tonight. I was going to be entertained, but uh, he says he knows my song, Coat of Many Colors, and he asked me if I would sing it. And I thank all of you for being fans, and I'm having a great time here. So we don't know how we're going to sound, because this is a first for both of us. But uh, this is a song I wrote, so I hope maybe we do okay. You're Steve, right? That's right. And you're what? Shemus. Shemus? Well, I'm happy to be here. <laughs> all right. Now what was the rest of it? Sewing so patches on my britches And holding both my shoes In my coat of many colors Well I hurried off to school Just to find the others laughing And making fun of me And my coat of many colors That mama made for me And oh I couldn't understand that I felt I was rich and then I told him of the love my mama sold in every stitch I even told him all that story that mama told me while she sold and just why my coat of many colors was worth more than all their clothes but they didn't understand that and I tried to make them see one is only proof choose to be oh yes it's true we had no money but i was rich as i could be in my coat of many colors that mama made for me everybody say in my coat of many as I could be in my coat of many colors that mama made for me. Thank you. 
That was you, Dolly, singing in Poydy O'Shea's pub. That was great. Uh, well, I've sang in many a pub before in my life in the early days, but Patty's Place was special. There was a, a sweet, you know, atmosphere, and the people were great. And I'll, of course, be singing all of the Coat of Many Colors in our show, too, when we come to Ireland with the with the new Blue Smoke tour that we're going to be coming. We, we'll be, of course, doing all of the songs that people love to hear, and we've got some new things to play and uh, some more sad songs to sing and some happy ones as well. Tell me about Smoky Mountains in Tennessee, Dolly. That's where you were born and grew up, isn't it? Yes, I was born and raised in the Great Smoky Mountains of East Tennessee, and I'm from a family of 12 children, just country folks making a living up there on a little 40-acre farm. My dad uh, scratched out a living. We grew all of our own food, and uh, we had a good life then. It was a hard one, harder for my mom and dad than for us. They made things as easy for us as they could, but uh, I have some wonderful memories. It's given me some wonderful ideas for songs and all that heart and soul of, you know, clinging together as family, believing and clinging to God and trusting one another and trusting God, and that's how you get through, and that's how I keep my sanity now when it gets so bad, you know, out in the crazy world. All I have to do is close my eyes and go home or pick up my guitar and sing one of those songs I've written about home. You also always knew you were going to be a star, is that right? Even as a little girl, Dolly, you, you kind of knew you'd be a star. Well, I wanted to be. I always wanted to be a singer. I wanted to travel. I wanted to see what was beyond the Smoky Mountains. So I guess I kind of did always feel like that I was going to be doing what I'm doing now. Of course, when you dream, sometimes you're... You know, your dreams come true. Sometimes they come false as well, <laughs> but mm -hmm. mine did come true. And I'm so thankful and so happy that I got to enjoy my life making a living at what I dreamed of and what I really love to do, and that's making music. You've got that focus and confidence. Did you always have that from a young age, and did you get that from your upbringing in Tennessee? Well, I think my faith in God was always uh, very strong, and I just believed, like they always said, that, through God, all things are possible. And uh, so I just kind of clung to that scripture. My grandpa was a preacher. My mother was very spiritual. And my mother allowed us to be our own selves, you know, what she encouraged us to do, whatever we wanted to do. My mother's people were very musical. So I just uh, took that and uh, went farther with it than any of them had. They usually performed around at local stuff in churches and county fairs, that sort of thing. But I just thought, well, I'm, I saw early on that... I might be able to make that into a business. And so it was my dream. It was my love. And I think God was in it. And evidently he was because uh, he's been good to me. And hopefully I've been able to touch people. My greatest wish in this world uh, has always been to entertain and to uplift people. And you do. I mean, everybody I said I was interviewing you, Dolly, said how much they like you. You are enduringly popular. Is that because you think you are upbeat and you always seem such a nice person? Why, how do you explain your enduring popularity? Well, I think there's probably a lot of reasons for it. I think the main one, I think people relate to me. I feel more like family to them. I think most people relate to people being brought up hard, being brought up poor without money and having to kind of cling together. I think they relate to the family thing. They relate to my Cinderella kind of story, <laughs> and uh, and I do feel like Cinderella, you know, sometimes. I think also the songs I write kind of talk about the things that the average person deals with every day, whether it's about heartbreak or emotion or whether it's just about having hard times, just trying to get by in this world, talks about family, talks about God. So I really think they, uh, and I've been around so long, I'm so familiar to people, I'm like a family member. You, I've been, you know, I've been popular in, in Ireland for 40 years or so, ever since I really started my early career, since Code of Many Colors and Tennessee Mountain Home and those kind of songs. So I just think people feel like they know me, and so, and I feel like they do. And everyone also knows what you look like, because you're known as much for your talent and your voice as for your incredible, glamorous image. Were you glamorous even as a little girl? Well, I always wanted to be pretty. I don't know if you've ever heard the song I wrote called Backwoods Barbie. The way I look yeah. uh, came from a very serious place, a country girl's idea of glamour. And when I first went to Nashville, I thought, well, you got it. If you're going to be in country music, you've you got to have some big hair. you got to have some makeup. you got to have some shiny clothes. And I always wanted all that. And I just, 
you know, I was not a natural beauty, so I've enhanced it as much as I can, whether it's with makeup, hair, or uh, whatever, you know. So I just, uh, I just have a certain opinion of myself, certain view of myself, certain vision of how I want to look according to how I feel. So this is the look that I've had, and uh, I'm comfortable with it, and people have accepted it and become comfortable with it. They might not be comfortable looking like that themselves, but they're comfortable with me looking like that. No, you look great. And what I find interesting is you managed to marry, you know, being a feminist and yet being incredibly glamorous. And a lot of women I spoke to this week before I was going to interview were saying that, you know, they're not mutually exclusive. And you are proof of that. Well, I've always loved being a woman. I'm glad I was a girl and I've, that has served me well. I've never felt I had to use my femininity as a weapon or a tool, but I certainly have and can and do. But I also just feel like my talent has spoke for itself. I'd like to mm. thank my good old common intelligence. I'm not an educated person. I'm not a, a genius of any kind, but I'm a very, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a, you know, I'm somebody that I just live out in the big world and what I don't know, I'll ask somebody and what I don't know, I'll say, I don't know that. Let's ask somebody that does. So I'm not bashful about that. I, I just kind of present myself as I am. I don't try to hide behind any you know, false intelligence, because that'll trip you up really quick. So if I'm dumb, it shows, and people accept that, and I admit it. But, you know, there are some things I do really well, some things I don't do as well, and I try to stay away from those things that I can't do well. But we had uh, probably one of our greatest songwriters in on our show last week, and when he heard you were coming to Ireland, he's called Jimmy McCarthy, he said, Dolly Parton is absolutely brilliant. You've written some of the greatest songs ever. So I don't think anyone is ever going to think of you as dumb. Well, I, don't, I didn't say I was dumb. I'm just saying I'm, I'm just one of those people that I'm very ordinary in so many ways. I'm, I'm a very professional Dolly Parton, let's put it that way. <laughs> I know who I am. I know what I know. I know what I don't know. And what I don't know, I can find out. So I guess that's, that's smart enough. I, I just live my life and do the best I can and ask God to help me and direct me and lead me and guide me 